welcome to Beyond the Lines. My name is Sarah. I'm the artist by Pinsel Geschichten and today in this final part of the whiskey storage I'm gonna work again in the Outlander coloring book. This is the book where this page comes from and I'm going to finish it today using Polychromos Papa Castell color pencils as well as a tiny little bit of Wink of Stella and uh, white gel pen. I'm again showing you how I intensify things for transparency, so anything glass, and uh, how I make the, or where I put color to make the light bounce off of things. And uh, I will have the blog post up about an hour after this video here is published, so you can see all the materials that I use for this coloring page and uh, have them listed. You don't have to take notes during the video. So enjoy and next week I'm going to be back with a new subsection series for a certain color. But I'm going to talk about that at the end of the video. Let's have the final part of this page here done. The last two weeks I worked with uh, Faber Castell Albrecht Dürer watercolor pencils to have this underpainting done and mostly here in the background also well pretty much the final painting. There's only very little that I'm going to add to that but here in the foreground I want a bit more details and a bit more of a uh, brighter colors. So I'm going to put the Faber-Castell polychromos on top. These are oil-based pencils, color pencils, and um, I'm going to work with them. Uh, I'm going to start here with the background and just have a little bit of black added to a few things here in the background just to darken a few things up but I don't want there to be too much focus on the background here. I just want it to be nice and dark mostly. So uh, I'm adding only black, maybe a bit of um, indigo, but actually mostly black just to darken things even more, pushing them into the background even more. I'm having a very light touch as I add the pigment here. And I'm going just over these few bits here that I had colored in earlier with uh, my uh, watercolor pencils. And I'm just darkening things here smoothing out a few of the lines of the watercolor pencil. And where I can see lines like on these um, barrels here, I will add them. I have a bit of a glare because of the filming lights, so I have to tilt my book once in a while a bit to um, make sure that I have my values correct. So for example there's going to be quite a bit of dark here. I'm going to add that. Also add it to these lines here on the barrel. Just bringing everything together. And the further I go to the background, the less details I'm going to put in. Because, well, if things are in the dark and further away, believe me, you won't be able to make out any, any details there. This barrel here also needs a bit of dark. The watercolor 
underneath gives the paper quite a bit of tooth so I really just need a very light touch here to bring things together. Now I'm going in with my deep indigo here and you know I think it was a, yeah it was in the first video that I had said I would take care of these bolds here with colored pencils so I'm just going to color them black just adding a few pencil lines here and there in the back I mean in the background uh, bits. I'm going to take care of the foreground barrels in a minute. Just want to have the majority here of the background done so that I don't have to think about that anymore. A little bit of the indigo, a little more black. Also here, again, I have to move the book quite a bit and also tilt it once in a while because I have a glare uh, due to my filming lights being quite bright and me not looking straight down at this coloring page here. I still want to make sure that I have my values as correct as possible. So once in a while tilting is in order. So make this a bit darker. Uh, this one here. Still have a bit of Bit of the indigo and the black. And uh, now I pretty much have the background done. Now I'm coming to the mid ground, which are these barrels here. Again, I'm going in with black to add a bit of shading. And now I will also add uh, lines on the grain here on these barrels. I'm going to stay with uh, the blue and the black for now. Just adding a bit of color here. Again, helping with the shape of the barrel and coloring in those bolts. And just like in last video, the fly is still in the studio and it still wants to get camera time. I hope really it doesn't fly onto the lens of the camera if it does and I don't see that or realize that. I'm sorry folks. Trying my best. Come on fly. Move. I'm working here. <laughs>
Okay. Now I will uh, sharpen my pencil. And now I will go over the lines here that came with uh, a print. I will just intensify them so that we have a bit more of that wooden grain visible on this page. So that you can have a bit of texture here. I'm just very lightly adding a bit of that black pencil to the uh, barrels here. Need a bit of black here underneath these uh, metal bands, these rings around the barrels. I don't know why that fly likes me so much. Maybe it still smells dinner on me. I don't know. Ah, just had dinner before I started recording this video here. So maybe that's that's why she came from the kitchen with me to the studio. So for these uh, grains here, for the details, I'm really just following the uh, the print, the line work that came with the book here. See, and I'm putting in a few squiggly lines and that makes all the difference. I could have done that with um, my watercolor pencils as well but I find it maybe a bit easier with color pencils where now I don't have to uh, go in with a brush and uh, liquefy the pigment. I mean, I could just leave the watercolor pencil as is and use it as a colored pencil, but I think I do like the polychromos for this a bit better. They're a bit oilier than the uh, watercolor pencils. So I think they're just having a nicer finish, at least for my taste. I'm not saying that you could not achieve something beautiful with any of that material. Maybe in the shadow here, also here, and here. And by going vertical with my pencil strokes here, I do enhance the wood grain look here. Because I'm pretty much going uh, the, in the direction the wood grain also goes. And that will just make it look more natural, more real.
might be a bit boring to watch this here but um, it really does the trick to make this look more complete, sophisticated, real, well shaded, you name it, you know. So definitely is worth putting in the work here. bit of shading here on that metal ring because that barrel again casts a shadow on that barrel I had said that when I watercolored these barrels here now I need a bit more of the indigo this particular one here and maybe a bit more over here. There we go. I think that barrel looks weathered enough. Now, um... I need the burnt umber, there it is, and I'm going to go over a few bits and just blend them out a bit because I think they're a bit too scratchy looking but I don't want to add any more black. There we go. Uh, on to the bottles up here. Um, I had the hooker screen and the oxide something green. Now uh, I'm going to bring in the cobalt, a uh, deep cobalt green as a shading color or just intensifying things color and I'm just gonna put down a little bit here and there again with staying with the line work that came with um, with the coloring book And then I'm also going to do the same thing here with indigo. And for the terracotta I'm going to take burnt ochre, which is the next darkest tone, to have a bit of um, dark going on there and also the burnt umber. And there we go. Uh, I don't think I need anything for this lighter bottle back here or maybe 
just a smidge of a warm gray just a bit here and there there we go Have it look a little bit smoother. Uh, I had the oxide chromium thing, so let, I'm just going over it. It's the same uh, color that I used for the watercolor underneath, but I just want this to look a bit smoother, less pencily. There we go. So that is that. Oh, maybe. Just a bit more of that green. There we go. Uh, now for the last bottle up here going to smooth things out with the chrome oxide green that I had also used with the watercolor pencils on this bottle. It's a bit smoother and I'm going to take a bit of the burnt umber to darken things up here. There we go. So the bottles and this um, barrel are done. Now I can go on to the next barrel. Let me quickly start my vlogging camera because I need a bit more footage <laughs> for um, my vlog. And I'm going to do pretty much the same thing that I also did on the other barrel. Just intensifying some of the color and adding the wood grain and the line work and stuff to uh, this barrel. So putting down quite the shadow underneath these metal rings here. No, actually I could... Hmm. Do I want to use a bit of time-lapse for this or not? Um, usually this, or I try to keep this real-time. But for these two barrels here, it's pretty much the same thing as here, so I'm going to time-lapse this and uh, just to save us some time, or you, I mean, save you some time there.
All right, now I got those uh, barrels down. I can move on to these lighter whiskey barrels. Um, I'm going to do the same thing as I did before with just a bit of uh, the dark indigo and the black for these um, metal rings here. When you have a layer of watercolor down, you only need very little to put on top when it comes to the colored pencils and you uh, well, have quite the shading going on, quite the color too. So, right now for these um, Um, I'm going to take the brown ochre for the wood grain here on this barrel. And I'm just following the lines again that came with the book here. Don't have to be super precise, just some squiggly bits here. Where there's the wood grain. Uh, that does make nice patterns. I'm going to do the same also here on the barrel. Again, adding line work to the wood grain. And this is pretty much monochrome tone and tone. But I'm also going to add a bit of the burnt umber towards the uh, back part here of this barrel. And I'm also going to add the burnt umber here on this side, adding a bit more darkness there, and underneath this metal ring here too. I'm going to add it on the right hand side of the barrel here, this uh, part of the shadow, because this is where the outside of the barrel casts a shadow on the inside. I have to 
very carefully. I'm going over this part here. Gonna have to be careful as this part is in the lit up bit. But I can color these um, seams here and that will, uh, I mean, dark, color them quite dark and that will give me a bit of contrast and detail on this barrel here. Doing the same on these simis here, but not all the way through, just like two thirds down. That's enough. Uh, yep, yeah, that's barrel, uh, the barrel on the right hand side, and now I'm going to do the same thing with this barrel. And uh, add some detail there. There's less wood grain to work with here. So I'm going towards general shading. Like for example the 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 more I get into the background here, or towards the background, the darker I get with this. Uh, what was it called? Brown ochre. Uh, same here, and also down here. Going in with the umber again. There's less detail on this barrel here because it is further away from the viewer. So I have to be careful that I don't put in more detail than there actually is. And just shade where uh, things are necessarily shaded. Like here for example to again sh show off the curved body of this barrel. Doing a few of those lines just to have a bit detail here. Again there is not nearly as much as there is with the other barrel but that is fine. Going in with the uh, blue dark indigo adding a bit of color to these metal bands here these rings And then I'm going to do the same with the black, darkening up the uh, barrel. Um, so the wood end, the metal rings, just going over with a layer of black. Uh, 
and I need to color these bolts here again. All right, that is the second barrel. You see? Um, now I will <laughs> I will go with this uh, box here next. I think that it's this tone here. That's the violet tone. I'm just going to go over the wood grain that uh, comes with this box here. Just adding a bit of detail and such. And then I'm going in with the uh, Deep Indigo, which I also laid down um, when I uh, used the watercolor pencils on this. And then I can also bring in a bit of black here, the very darks. I don't have to take care of the uh, yellow bits here because they are golden and I will cover these last with a bit of gel pen then. Maybe intensify a bit of the purple here and there. All right. Uh, now I will go on to the bottles. Um, first, I'm going to add a bit of the brown ochre here. And then a bit of this uh, dark green. And again, I will use the line work that comes with the book. So I need a bit of indigo here on the side. Also on the bottom. And I need a bit of a light green uh, here. Just a bit where the light really hits. On the next bottle here, I'm going to add a bit of the chrome and then also a bit of the light green. Um, I have a bit of these yellows here. And my indigo, of course. Just 
going with the pattern of the bottle there. And then, do I already have sepia? No, so I need sepia. That's the one gray. There is sepia. Need a bit of that for the shadows uh, underneath the bottles. Uh, going on to the next one here, that clay or whatever it is, gray, gray stone bottle here. Need a bit of that green as well. It bounces onto this gray bit. Um, need a bit darker here. And the sepia goes underneath. For the turquoise I'm going to take the cobalt turquoise pencil and I'm just going to add a bit of that. Maybe I need a bit of the black. To darken the edges. And also darken the bottle behind it a bit. Again, working with the line work that came for this page to darken things up. Need the sepia down here. And I'm going to take the same violet, red, brown thing that I also use for the box for this bottle. Need a bit of the warm gray. Okay. Maybe smooth it out a bit more. Go. And the fly is back. <laughs> uh, on to these bottles here. Ooh. Need a bit of that green. Adding a bit of the uh, cobalt, a deep cobalt green here where there's a blue tint to it. A bit of the sepia in the lower part here. And a bit of this yellow. Uh, dark Naples ochre, uh, a bit of that onto the labels of these bottles here. Also going to add a bit of the green onto this one here because there's um, the color bounces off of these bottles. Need a bit of black here. And a bit of indigo for the hidden bottle. Uh, 
And then I can work on this one here. This one has a bit of a bounce of green. Also turquoise. And then with the indigo can do the rest. So you see on these glasses the reflection, the color I use most is indigo uh, to have the detail, details on top of that um, light blue color. So aside from the from the floor everything here pretty much everything there is uh, colored and I can go in with indigo and sepia now and a little bit of green for this first glass, uh, glass here. There's a bit of green and a bit of indigo here. And sepia underneath. Uh, same for this bottle here. glass and again the sepia bottom and the bottom is because you can look through the glass and you can see the floor uh, the, the wooden boards pretty much there that is why there is the sepia from these three bottles here I'm also going to add a bit of that uh, violet red thing not too much though just a bit there we go a little sepia here Oop. there we go uh, maybe just a smidge more blue here and on this bottle it's pretty much the same thing now like i said uh, earlier in this video once you have your base color down so in my case the watercolor underneath it is fairly easy to find out which colors to use for shading on top where something needs a bit more or where you're good with the way you had your underpainting and with a little bit of um, well practice you will find that out in any of your drawings and paintings as well if uh, you're still a bit unsure so just try it and uh, go with well pretty much mathematical uh, with a ma mathematical logic approach for the beginning so it's a very simple yes and no uh, game that you're pretty much playing uh, like for example is is this in shadow yes or no coloring accordingly or using accordant colors to work with and uh, you just go about your uh, scenery your piece of art answering yes and no questions in your head and maybe in the beginning it helps to say them out loud so one of these questions is about is this is in is this uh, in the light or in the shadow is this in the foreground is this in the background and um yeah that really helps with um 
coloring things and, and putting the right values to something. Now on top of this uh, crate here, of this chest, there's of course a few things that need to be uh, getting a bit of a shadow. Also adding a bit of sepia to it. Uh, this one here needs a cold tone, so I'm just going in with my indigo for now. That was the metal flask, kind of, that has a pattern on top, so I'm just going to put a bit of indigo to a few lines here, or trying to make sense of that pattern here by adding a bit of colors here and there. I need a bit of black. This sits behind the other bottle partially, so of course it needs a darker shadow because there is no transparent bottle that would let uh, some light through. This is a solid one and this would uh, make things darker on this bottle. Now to turn my page again, uh, here I want a bit of that red violet, a bit of the sepia here on top. And just the smidge of the indigo for this bottle. Maybe uh, with the sky blue, just um, smoothing out a few things here. And the terracotta one, I'm going to take the same uh, burnt ochre that I used for this bit up here. I'm going to use it on the bottle here. I'm also going to use the burnt umber on top, just like I did with the other terracotta piece. Okay. Now I need to take care of the floor and then I can add um, highlights and everything with a gel pen and such. So I'm taking the black pencil and I'm adding it to the shadow bits here. Like for example here behind the barrel. And uh, so underneath these bottles. Behind these bottles here. glasses here. And then here 
as well. I'm also going to add lines here on the floorboards just like I did on the seams of the barrels. We'll just add a little bit of oomph to it, you know. Just make it look complete. Now I'm going to use the sepia again and add a bit more here and there. this and see if I have the right values. I need a bit darker underneath the barrel here. Okay, now I can go in with um, the uh, gel pens and such to finish things off like for example here I want the uh, golden ink of Stella to put on top just to give this a uh, golden feel buckle here okay and then I need some white highlights so I'm going to pull my gel pen get it started and uh, just gonna add a few lines here and there where the light breaks Not on these bottles per se, not maybe here. Not here. This one here is so that the uh, gel pen is dry. So let's see. It doesn't take the uh, 
light green pencil okay so i'm just gonna leave it white otherwise i would have had a little bit of that um of that light green on top but i think i want to add a little darker red to this chest here it's just a little bit too light for my taste using the indigo now to go over the patterns it's maybe not such a bad idea and add a little bit of sepia and a smidge of red that's better so let's move it into the frame I'm going to look from it afar squint and see if I need anything else I don't think so I think I'll leave it as it is, or maybe just have a little sky blue here and there, maybe here. that's it I think I'll leave it at that uh, that is my whiskey storage <laughs> coloring page I hope you enjoyed watching along and I just saw that I have no shadow here so I need to bring that in just underneath these golden straps here but i hope you enjoyed watching along if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below if you happen to color along uh, i would love to see your coloring when it's done so send me a photo either on any of the social medias you can tag me or you can send it to me via email uh, whatever you feel comfortable with and um, yeah give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and thank you again very much for watching and I will see you next week with a new video the next uh, next up I'm going to start this uh, another color section and what I want to work with is gray so the grays are warm grays and cold grays are going to be the color that i'm going to explore in the next videos there's going to be uh just as before for every other color there's going to be uh watercolors and um colored pencils and copic markers and um tombow markers as so indian ink markers there's gonna be videos for all of that and i'm gonna show you how i would like to work with gray um and yeah that's that's that i hope you liked this video uh, if you're new to the channel and you want to see more don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so that you're notified whenever i release a new video and uh, i'm gonna see you folks take good care and uh the blog is up by now for this page with all the materials that I used. Thanks again. Bye!